In this final chapter, we will introduce some ways in which artists incorporate the model into their creative practices. A large sculpture, which is not intended to be based on the precise proportions of a pre-existing object, can be approached differently than furniture. Rather than beginning with measurements, it may come more naturally to make a small version of the sculpture organically, intuitively checking the proportions against the scaled model of the space. Once the sculpture looks right to you, you may then measure it in order to figure out exactly what dimensions it should be and the materials you need in order to build it full scale. Not all models need to be perfectly to scale in order to be functional. Instead of starting with the room, you may prefer to start by cutting out a simple figure and loosely constructing the space around the size of a human body. This is a useful technique for developing ideas and exploring relationships. You may also use a model in order to figure out elements of live performance or film in advance. A figure can be placed in different areas of the room with different lighting elements and other interventions, and this experimentation can help the artist distill the narrative. The model that we referred to when learning about construction was used to figure out the score of a film of mine. You can see how the still of the film was directly influenced by what was discovered in the model. To take this process further, many artists choose to photograph these various configurations. This documentation can show progression for a performance, transformational installation elements, or the position of the audience. The photographs can be digitally manipulated afterwards in the program of your choice to include non-physical elements, such as lights and atmosphere. Even Instagram filters can change the feel of your space. Here are some final questions you may want to explore further when making your own spatial work. Where is the object and where is the subject? How does the scale of the work affect the amount of time that the viewer spends with the work? What is the difference between placing a viewer inside a space and in front of it? And how does that change the experience of the work? What are some spaces from your own life that tell a story of their own? I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the miniature. If you're interested, here's a suggested creative exercise. Return to the memory exercise in the introduction. Review your notes and sketches. How would this collection of ideas manifest as a spatial work? Think about scale and viewership. Make a model of this spatial work. Try photographing it from different angles and edit the photos as you see fit.